Sun Report, saying thanks so much for being with us today. It's my pleasure. I'd like to start off by having you talk to us a little bit about what the company does. Sure. Sun Reports is in the monitoring space. We measure the performance of solar electric and solar hot water systems uh, at the residential level primarily. We also do co some commercial stuff, but our primary focus is residential. And talk to us a little bit about what kind of information you're capturing on behalf of your clients. Sure. So we're, we're capturing performance data uh, on behalf of the end user, but also on behalf of the installer. Um, currently, the installers tend to not offer ongoing service uh, plans or maintenance contracts with the, uh, with the installation of solar electric or solar hot water systems, um, primarily because they can't see the performance of those systems from a remote location. So they rely on the customer to do their own troubleshooting, hey, the system's not operational, and then they scramble and have to send a guy out. Uh, what we're doing is enabling the uh, installer to take a more proactive role in their management of their customer base because referrals come from that customer base. Consequently, if they're able to see performance remotely, they can offer some value-added services such as uh, uh, performance assurance, uh, energy guarantees, uh, advanced service plans, annual maintenance, uh, whatever. Give us a couple examples of the types of data that you're collecting through the system mm -hmm. and then how you educate the end user, that homeowner, on why that data is even important. All right, so let me uh, talk about the solar hot water space first. Um, the solar hot water space is 50, 5, 0 times larger uh, in installed systems than the PV space worldwide. Um, consequently, uh, the whole rest of the world uses uh, the sun to heat water. The United States tends not to. We use uh, solar, we use uh, uh, gas or electric to heat our water, which is kind of inefficient. Um, the installers in that space um, have forever told their customers when they're asked, hey, I've got this system on my roof, but I really don't know if it's working. They say, go feel the pipe and see if the, see if the pipe's hot. Well, go feel the pipe is not really fulfilling for somebody who's on Facebook or tweeting or you know, is, is engaged in, in, in our modern society. And so what we're doing is we're enabling the installer um, to provide monitoring on these systems and therefore the customer can see for themselves if their system is operational or not. And so we're picking up temperature and flow and then converting to BTUs or kilowatt hour therm. Um, whatever that happens to be. And how, how easy of an education is that for the customer? I assume the customer has a little bit of knowledge because they're installing the system into their home, but as far as the day-to-day -day management of these systems, what is that what has that process been like? Well, for both, yeah, for both solar electric and solar hot water, um, you tend to not know if they're not working. I mean, if, if, spectac if, if, the, if the failure of these systems was more spectacular with uh, you know, water or flames or smoke or something, you would know, hey, well, my system's not working. They just stop working. And so you're still taking a warm shower in, in the case of hot water. You're still using electricity in the case of a PV system because you're backed up with the grid. Um, but your, your uh, generation system might not be functioning. Uh, and so the first thing we're, we're solving is, is this thing that I invested in working or not? Let's measure the return on this investment that I've made. And then secondarily, when we get uh, more and more performance data and we're able to do some higher level analytics, then we can start to do some stuff on, um, is my system working as it, sh as it was designed to work? Not just it, you know, digitally, is it on or off, but is it functioning as it was intended? Uh, and that's where we get some real interesting, uh, interesting learning. So give me some other additional surprises that you guys have kind of learned, not only about the process to incorporate the software platform into your, you know, your network and ultimately the end user, but also what kind of data you're finding now that this stuff is, now that your solution is in so many homes. Sure. Um, the, the, the first surprise that we've had is that um, we expected that most of the electric systems that we would monitor or go out to monitor would be functional. Um, we're finding like four out of ten aren't. Um, some are just off, and the customer didn't know because they've still got the, the utility backing them up. On the, you know, they're on the grid. Um, others are um, half working, right? So they're getting some production, but maybe a string is offline, or a squirrel is eating a wire, or the half of their inverter bank is down. There's all kinds of stuff that happens that you might think you've got a system, but you actually don't. In the hot water space, we're finding all kinds of interesting stuff around um, uh, pumps that are running too fast, circulating uh, fluid too, too quickly through the panels and causing some uh, uh, on-off situations on the pump that will eventually wear the pump out. And so the installers, especially from the hot water space, um, once they see this performance data, they can't go back. 
they've installed these systems blind for 30 years. Now they're seeing performance data. They're able to do some troubleshooting, and they're hooked. They, they can never go back to doing it blind again. So if the if four out of, let's just say roughly four out of 10 customers are realizing that there's some sort of issue within their installation, right. is that trend prohibiting other people from wanting to include this technology into their home because it's a four out of 10 success, or it's telling people this is what's going on, now you can really take the types of advantages that you that you were thinking of when you bought the system. Right, again. right. Um, I don't think it's inhibiting people. I think there are other drivers that are inhibiting uh, that, that uh, monitoring can actually help with. Um, the biggest factor, I think, that causes people to not invest in this is that they don't understand what they're buying. Um, and and, and the, in, the installers have tended to um, rely on their one bullet, which is low price, um, and have been uh, pitching hard on you know the price portion of the of the equation and and I think that risk is in many instances more important than price and so if customers are able to um, get some assurance from their installer that that the installer has their back on their performance on these things uh, and that the installer is sharing the risk with them I think that barrier tumbles and and we should see a more rapid adoption of, of solar now one thing that we do um, in with our monitoring data is we help the installer or help the end user share performance data on their system with their Facebook friends. Now it seems kind of a non sequitur jump to go from monitoring data to Facebook, but these people are connected. I mean, they're they're technology savvy. Um, they have they've made an investment in in, in a in a technology that they don't quite fully understand for benefits that they can't quite articulate. Um, and yet, we give them the opportunity to share their data on Facebook with their friends, and, and, and it's pretty innocuous. It's just, you know, here's my performance data on my solar system, and the goal is that peer group then says, oh wow, you've got solar? Well, tell me about that. How's that working for you? Now, the real unique part of that, I mean, it's unique enough to save it on Facebook, the real unique part is branding travels with it. And so the installer's brand goes with the, uh, the Facebook post so that your friends, um, if, they, if they trust your judgment, um, they aren't going to shop for solar. They're going to start with who you decided to go with. And that's a real boon for the installer. And this is really two types of technologies that you're introducing to the residential customer. Not just solar, but also the energy management side of what that solution offers. Does the homeowner, is this their first entree to management of, of power? for that customer, or does the homeowner typically have some other type of management system in their home that they're already familiar with? It's a real mixed bag. Um, some of them have uh, an idea about energy or they wouldn't have gone the solar route anyway. So they've sort of self-selected as being as being interested in in, uh, in the technology. The interesting part is in, in California, uh, and in many parts uh, of the country where the smart grid exists, uh, smart grid and net metering, which you have if you have a solar system, they don't overlap. That Venn diagram does not intersect. And so by definition in California, if you've got solar, you don't have a smart meter. Well, that's kind of odd. So now the person who is who cares the most about energy is the least served by the technology provided by the utility. And so you have to then come in and do some other form of energy management or energy reporting uh, information. And you can use our platform to do that. As the year is coming to a close, talk to us a little bit about some of the highlights that the company's accomplished this year and what's What's ahead for 2012? Sure, um, we have done a, uh, a really good job in the hot water space and we are almost a de facto standard um, in terms of monitoring for these systems. Uh, Massachusetts Clean Energy Council Coalition has used uh, Sun Reports extensively uh, to measure the performance of their uh, of their, their installed systems. Uh, we've just been selected by City of Milwaukee to do all of the uh, monitoring of their uh, solar electric and solar hot water systems that they're installing. Um, that part of our business has grown uh, has grown really well. We've spent more time uh, in the hot water space than we have in the PV space, and now we're getting ready to launch into the PV space. So how does your software platform differentiate yourselves from the competition that's trying to you know, offer the same thing to the same customers? Okay, good question. Um, the, the, as we look around at the available monitoring solutions, it's unclear to me that they've got a really clear view in their own minds of the uh, of the sort of data they're trying to serve to which audience. Um, we've got a, a number of different audiences that have different data needs. The end user has a need for simplified data that's sort of a digital, is it working or is it not working, and attaboy, you're doing great. Um, the installer needs more detailed data about the performance of that system, maybe the performance against its expected performance that they've sold to this customer based upon the ROI that they've, that they've offered, um, and, and the performance of that system against the performance of its peers uh, in a similar geography. 
um, the regulators have a different set of, of information needs and they want to see a rolled up version, like City of Milwaukee, wants to see a rolled up version of their performance of all their systems so that they can tout themselves as a green city like San Francisco does, the greenest city in the country. Um, so they can tout themselves as a, as a green uh, entity and, and have some proof points to that. Um, and so we, we tend to keep in mind as we're showing data and as we're developing views for our users, we try to keep in mind who that user is and what their knowledge base is so that are they able to, to interpret or synthesize this data. Many customers don't know the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour. Showing them a very detailed engineering graph isn't cutting it for them. We need to have simple views that are uh, easy to understand and easy to comprehend. And, and what tools are currently in place if a customer doesn't understand what's being you know, displayed to them? Do they, do they contact their installer? Do they contact you directly? Is there something on the side that says, I don't know? Right. Um, currently, they contact their installer. Uh, we tend to get a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, requests directly from people who forget who their installer is, uh, which is why we've added the branding uh, capability to our, to our views. Um, the next step for us is the creation of an energy community around uh, solar technologies. And so if, you're, if you've got a solar electric system or a solar hot water system, you have a lot in common with other people who have a solar hot water system or a solar electric system. And it, it, it's interesting uh, to think forward about how do I introduce those communities to each other and what data can they share and what group learning can we create uh, by causing something along those lines. And this is, is this a community that you're trying to build on, on the, your own site, or is this something you're trying to do in Facebook, or a collaboration with both? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it, there are so many communities around now. Um, the idea would be, uh, let's find a place where people already are, which is why we're on Facebook now. Um, there's like a, uh, a billion people on Facebook now. Uh, 700 million as of May. Well, okay, so now we're six months later. I'm sure there's closer to a billion. Um, and, and if that community already exists and we're able to facilitate the discussion around solar, okay, so much the better. Um, if we need to have a more uh, intimate uh, uh, community, then we'll just create that on our own on our own site. And talk just very briefly. Talk to us a little about what that express or what that experience is like trying to work with local municipalities to try to get them to incorporate your technology and, and solution to their offerings. Yeah, uh, mixed bag. Um, it has. Uh, it, it is always convenient to rely on some established standard um, for metrology or for uh, accuracy. And unfortunately, in the hot water space, we sort of don't have that. Um, there are some European standards that we've tried to, uh, that some of the regulators have tried to bring across um, that aren't directly applicable. Um, and so we're working with uh, the regulators to help keep things simple. Our, our sort of motto, is, we borrow it from Einstein, is uh, make things as simple as possible, but not simpler. Um, the, it, many times the program administrators don't adopt that, and um, it is absolutely possible to make an airplane too big to fly and make these, uh, these standards too complex uh, to, to be adopted by the marketplace. And, and, and we've got an instance of, of that um, where the, the requirements by one of the big jurisdictions around um, pretty much obviates the need for monitoring. It, it's so expensive to do to comply with that that people are saying, oh, pff, screw it, I just won't do monitoring on these, on these projects, which is the exact wrong answer in terms of, uh, in terms of a regulation or a, or a market uh, development uh, agency. And what's on tap for the, for the upcoming year? Oh, upcoming year, um, we, we're looking at some international expansion. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, markets where the sun shines all the time, like Australia. Um, we're looking at uh, getting into Europe. Uh, the European market is far in, uh, advanced, uh, more advanced than the United States is. Uh, many more installed systems, uh, more established competition, so it'll be interesting to, to stack up against those guys. Um, uh, working on some uh, integration with existing players where we'll take our reporting technology, uh, we won't use our hardware, we'll, we'll, we'll get built into their uh, solution and uh, that will be very interesting to see, how that, uh, to see how that plays out. Why does this space interest you and why have you chosen to, to do what you're doing? Well, I've been in the energy world forever, um, on one side of the customer meter, customer's meter or the other. Uh, I spent some time with Honeywell and Johnson Controls in the ESCO space, spent some time in the smart grid space with uh, Whisper Communications, only 15 years too soon for the, for the smart grid space. Um, energy fascinates me, um, and energy at retail, at the residential level, um, fascinates me because it's, we, we have such tremendous opportunity here. You look at an insulation map of the United States compared to the, to the solar insulation of, of Germany, <laughs>
it, it, it's, it, Germany's insulation is, is the equivalent of Alaska. Um, uh, the, the, the opportunity here to use the sun for renewable energy, uh, for hot water heating or for electric, is, is just, it's completely untapped. We're, we're under 2% penetration in this country. And it's just fascinating to me to figure out what are the barriers to uh, more um, uh, uh, rapid adoption in, in the space, to more mass adoption of, of solar, and, and to help knock down some of those barriers.